Hello. This lecture is about 3D printing of plastic parts. The objective of current lecture is to teach about uh, 3D printing of uh, different uh, different plastic parts and you, by using various technologies. So there are different technologies available but also the results are different so it's uh, good if uh, people who watch this video could learn what what are the main differences between technologies there are so many different technologies for 3d printing of plastic parts and uh, these uh, different technologies, uh, they, the result is that um, the parts are different when we're depending on the technology used. However, users have to know what are the differences between the technologies in order to, to select the best approach for their project. Uh, when we are talking about 3D printing of uh, plastics, then basically we have several material types that we can use for that. Uh, th there, are, there are many producers and um, many different materials and uh, these um, main categories are filaments, powders and photopolymers. So, first class, perhaps this is the most uh, widely known. This is uh, uh, based on filament materials. So, uh, the material is thermoplastic and uh, it's, uh, the form is like filament or uh, a plastic wire that is uh, heated up and uh, and uh, transferred to the building platform. So in this uh, process, as you can see from the small video there, the printer is squeezing the melted material through the heated nozzle. And this way, the cross section of part is built. So again, like, like in um, all uh, printing 3d printing technologies it's layer wise technology and we are adding material so in this uh, approach um, thermoplastic is used and the layer thickness uh, is usually higher than 0 0.1 millimeter and we are we were using also support structures to to support the overhanging uh, areas otherwise we cannot print some machines can have several materials like like if you can see on the picture on the right side um, we, we can use different materials for uh, for the main part and for the supports that we can uh, remove later. Different materials are used worldwide and uh, different colors are used. And uh, very many, very many producers are producing uh, machines with this principle. On this slide you can see some examples. Uh, parts uh, that are built with this uh, approach can be really strong. Uh, th they can have different colors. And uh, it's, a, it's a way to produce functional parts. Now let's move on and uh, talk about powder-based systems. So if the raw material is in powder form, then there are basically uh, three options how to solidify 
the powder or to make it a solid 3D object. One way is to use gluing and uh, bind these tiny powder particles together in these areas where we need to build the part. Second option is to use sintering, which means that uh, we're uh, heating the powder particles and uh, we're heating it near or be just below their melting point, but the, but the particles uh, stuck, stuck together, uh, they are like um, sintered uh, together, but it's not fully solid. And usually this is uh, used for plastics. However, we have also a similar process, uh, which is including uh, melting. Uh, when we are talking about sintering, then this process is called, for example, selective laser sintering. This is when we are using laser power to, to heat up the uh, powder particles. But when we are using selective, uh, or when we are using melting, then it's called selective laser melting. And in that case, uh, we are uh, heating the the material above uh, uh, this melting temperature, but uh, this is used uh, for metals. So we, in case of plastics we are talking about selective laser sintering and some other processes uh, that are um, heating the uh, plastic materials. So, a few words about uh, selective laser sintering. Uh, selective laser sintering uh, uses laser. And you can see the main principle on this uh, picture, on the right side of the slide. Uh, it's layer-wise technology with the layer thickness uh, typically 0.1 millimeters. Uh, it can be uh, lower or higher as well. Uh, the process takes place in uh, working uh, or building chamber with a nitrogen environment to prevent oxidation and degradation of the material. And uh, uh, the temperature of, uh, of this uh, gas there, the temperature of the building chamber is uh, higher than uh, room temperature is uh, just a little bit lower than the melting point of the powder. And, and this laser beam is uh, applied uh, to heat up the cross-section of the part to form the, to sinter the particles. So at the beginning uh, the recruiter is applying uh, powder on, on top of the powder bed or the building platform, then laser is uh, used to heat up the cross-section, uh, particles uh, sinter are sintered together, and then uh, the platform goes down one layer thickness, and then a new um, powder layer is applied, and the laser beam is melting the, or, or heating up the cross-section and it's fused to the previous layer and so on. Uh, in this technology no extra support structures are needed, which is very good because uh, we don't uh, have to create them and afterwards we don't uh, need to remove them. So the loose powder will be around the part, which is kind of fixing the part in this position and uh, this powder can be uh, reused now depending on the technology and the material so the, the, the ratio of reusing of the powder can be different but usually it's uh, half of the material has to be um, changed or half of the material has to be fresh one and a good thing about this technology is that we can print uh, very many parts together. We can uh, leave just a small gap, let's say one or two millimeters between the parts, and we 
you can uh, print hundreds of parts together. So it's uh, quite productive. And uh, we, we can build uh, functional parts that are quite accurate and strong. So next powder-based technology is called color jet printing technology. And at the beginning, uh, or at, <laughs> many years ago, uh, this was the original 3D printing technology that was like called this way. Other technologies were something else like sterilithography and uh, selective laser sintering and something. And this uh, 3D printing was was this specific technology. But but now uh, the term 3D printing is used for <laughs> for all these additive manufacturing technologies. However, in this technology. Uh, the binder is used uh, to bind together the powder particles. And uh, it's, it's very similar to the previous process, uh, this SLS. Uh, but here, uh, instead of uh, heating with laser, we are uh, gluing uh, the particles just by printing the glue layer by layer on top of the we are adding the glue on the loose powder where the part should be. So if this glue has different colors, then we can easily print colorful parts. However, you can see that the strength of the, of the part is uh, defined with great extent uh, with this um, uh, proper, uh, properties of the glue. So it's not exactly melting anything, but uh, but uh, so, so uh, the pro mechanical properties are a little bit uh, worse than in case of uh, selective laser sintering. But uh, it is quite productive, quite fast. And uh, this technology is nowadays used uh, quite widely for sand casting or making the tools for sand casting. So here on this slide you can see some examples, nice colorful objects, but not very strong though. Now let's move on and let's talk about um, another powder-based technology. Uh, this is called uh, Hewlett-Packard Multi-Jet Fusion Technology. And this technology is quite new. And this is very advanced technology. Uh, here, you, you, as you can see on this uh, picture from the right side, uh, it has several steps in building. It's, uh, of, co of course, again, the layer-wise technology. First, uh, fresh powder layer is applied to the building platform. Then printing head comes and prints fusing agent to the area where cross-section of the part has to be. Then it prints also detailing agent to the edges of the part. And then the uh, whole section is heated with in infrared light or heated up with a lamp. So now this energy will be absorbed much more in these areas where fusing agent is used. So it is uh, causing the material to melt only in these areas. So uh, if you are building layer by layer the part this way, then uh, it's uh, similar to this selective laser sintering. However, because uh, heat is applied uh, to the full cross section and the printing can be really fast. The process is quite fast when compared to selective laser sintering. And uh, it's uh, quite well controlled. And uh, we can use uh, colorful, uh, colorful materials here and uh, so the result is multi-material. Multi and and uh, these parts are strong, accurate, quite quite nice looking parts. So this is this is technology that is used 
uh, in real industrial applications very widely nowadays. Now let's move on and uh, let's explain um, principles of building parts with photopolymers. So this is the third category of the materials. Uh, photopolymers are materials that can transform, can, can be transformed from liquid to solid state by applying light. And this uh, light can be applied with, with lamp or with laser. So the first technology was stereolithography, which, which is actually the, the first 3D printing technology. And uh, it was found, this technology was invented by Charles Hull, who founded also 3D Systems, which is a very large company, one, one of the largest uh, printing technologies company. So in this uh, uh, technology called stereolithography, we are using lasers to to solidify the material. So in the, in the machine, the, we're using uh, photopolymer resin, which is uh, inside of the machine tank. And inside of this tank, uh, there is moving um, platform, the building platform. It starts at the top level, and it then during the building, it moves downwards. So at the beginning, it's uh, uh, I'd say up, uh, uppermost position, and uh, there is only a very thin layer of resin, photoresin, on top of the uh, build platform. So, laser is used to harden the the resin, and it will uh, it will be attached to the platform. Now, it it hatches the material and it solidifies only in uh, the okay the laser beam is hatching the cross section of the part then uh, build flat platform moves downwards and uh, liquid resin is applied on top of the uh, previous layer and the uh, process repeats new laser is ag again solidifying the layer and uh, uh, then re everything repeats. So here, as the material is in liquid state, it means that uh, uh, details of the of the part uh, they can be much smaller because material is liquid and we can use smaller layers. In case of uh, powder-based materials, the limiting uh, factor is the particle size of the powder. But here, the material is in liquid form, and actually we can um, we can change the thickness of the layer uh, more flexible way. And you can see here on this slide some example parts which can be really nice looking parts with very delicate detail, uh, detail textures as designed by CAD engineer. And uh, different materials exist uh, with different properties. Generally these uh, parts, uh, they look really, really nice, aesthetically very, very good. Now let's move on and uh, explain some more technologies. Next technology uh, can be called multi-jet or polyjet printing technology. So in this technology we're also using liquid photo resin and in that uh, in this case uh, we are not uh, performing this in a uh, uh, tank with field of uh, of this resin, but we are just printing the resin only in these areas where we need to create the layer of the cross-section of the part. 
And the good thing here is that uh, as we are printing it, we can print it quite fast. And the um, hardening is made with UV lamps. So it, uh, lamps can be powerful and printing is quite, uh, it can be fast. And uh, we can use different, uh, the, the strength of this system is that we can use multiple materials in one single product. So it means that we can combine materials and we can uh, even mix different materials. And uh, we can make uh, like gradient materials that uh, properties are different in different areas of the part. And you can see some examples here. Really, really nice looking parts can be made using these technologies. Uh, colorful, nice, uh, very detailed uh, parts. So actually, um, I only mentioned uh, some, some technologies. There, so, there is so many, <laughs> so many different technologies available. So these were the most widespread technologies. There are much, much more. So if we have so many technologies, then uh, uh, the selection of appropriate technology can be, can be tricky especially when the, the different uh, materials uh, uh, can be used and uh, we have to know what are the differences in these technologies. But, but generally, thermoplastic materials have usually better mechanical properties, like strength and durability, and photopolymers uh, have better appearance. They look better and uh, the surface texture is uh, surface is smoother uh, looks looks nice so there is a balance between uh, these two to sum up i, I would say that uh, there are very many approaches available and properties of the parts are depending on the technology that we are using and generally speaking thermoplastics are stronger and photopolymers um, look better. So if you want to have both, uh, both sides, then uh, perhaps you have to be creative or decide where, where is the balance. Thank you for your attention.